YouTube, what's new besides the world ending? Um, it's been a while since I've posted, but you know, I needed the break. <laughs> um, I've spent the last like forever studying and I just wanted to play some Breath of the Wild before Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, even though we have no news on when that's going to happen. So it's been a while. This is also my second attempt at filming this video. And no, it's not my cat's review. That is going to come up. Just not now. So what is this video going to be? Well, I figured with the world practically ending, I would give some advice for some people who are looking at going to law school. So this is another one of those what they don't tell you about law school videos or what law school doesn't prepare you for videos. Except this is what you're not prepared for about law school. Um, so I want to preface everything I'm about to say by being like the advice you're going to read in books like Law School Confidential, which is a book I read, I would suggest you read it, is really good sound advice, but take it with a grain of salt. Um, same thing goes with any advice you get from someone who graduated top of the class, got a job right out of law school, um, and went to a really, really good law school. Like, advice from those kind of people, they're going to give you a very filtered view of what they did in law school, what it worked for them. However, because they didn't ever struggle, or they don't say that they struggled, they don't know why the advice they're giving works. And this isn't to like say anything bad about that kind of advice, but take it with a grain of salt because when you only believe that and when you only get that kind of advice, you do get a false impression of law school. Um, and like, this isn't to say don't take it at all because it is good advice. Like, I'm going to be the first one to say Legal Eagle has a great video about going into law school. However, he also went to a top law school, graduated top of his class, got a job right out. He has a very limited view on law school because from everything I've seen, he didn't struggle, but he's really smart. So like, who cares, right? Um, so this advice is going to be a bit more realistic. Um, I'm kind of debunking some of the stuff you're going to hear over and over and over again. Like, I think one of the top pieces of advice that I was told besides don't go to law school, which I'll get into, was treat law school like a job. Which, that's great. I did that. However, whenever you hear the, the advice, what you're gonna hear is treat law school like a job. I wish I had done that, but I didn't do it. But I'm telling you to do it. So here's the thing. People tell you this advice and they're like, do this. I didn't do it though. So they don't actually know if the advice works or not. Um, and it's definitely helpful advice. But when you get people saying, I didn't do it, but you should do it. Why, why, why are you listening to them? They don't know if it works or not. They didn't do it themselves. Um, so I'm here to tell you, as a person who did treat it like a job, I would get up around 7, I would start, my day would start at like 8 when classes started, 8 or 9 when classes started, and it would end at like 7 at night. And I would only do school-related things in that time period during the week, even on Fridays, I know. The Fridays I did try to end a bit earlier because typically we had socials and stuff to go to that I wanted to partake in. So the thing is with that kind of stuff is it really sucked the life out of me. Yes, I had my weekends free, but no one else did because nobody else treated it really like a job. Like, yeah, they studied all the time, but they didn't really treat it like a job. Um, so while it's good advice, it's not 100% a guarantee you're going to get good grades with it because I didn't and I treated it like a job. I studied just as hard as everybody else, but I was just not as smart as everybody else. So treat that piece of advice with a grain of salt because 
it may not work. And one thing that I've taken to heart is don't completely change how you studied in undergrad because how you studied in undergrad worked for you. Yes, you need to adapt your study skills to how law school works, but don't completely do a 180 for, from how you treated school in undergrad because you did well in undergrad. You can still do well in law school, but you just have to adapt your study habits a bit. But don't completely change them just because your buddy is doing something different from you. So, yeah. Um, other advice that you're probably going to hear and you're going to be told um, is visit your law school. Well, guess what? You can't do that right now. So, I'm going to give you some tips on how to talk to people in the admissions office um, who you're likely going to talk to, although it's kind of debatable right now if you're actually going to talk to a student because law schools are basically shut down. But here's some advice. Number one, look at the school's website before you make any calls to anyone requesting a meeting of any sort. Look at the school's website look at what they offer go through the full thing i know that sounds so so boring you have time right now trust me look at the school's website because that will answer probably about 80 percent of the questions you have especially in regards to numbers and facts so like median gpa median lsat score all of that stuff will be on the school's website so look at that first instead of asking it because let me tell you something the person on the other end of the phone either has the fact sheet in front of them and they're just reading off the fact sheet or they're looking on the website of the school which is something you can do so look at the school's website before you call the next thing is if you do get a student worker do not discredit them because they are a student they are a student they know the the lowdown of the school better than the admissions counselors and the dean of admissions because yes they know the school they know the facts about the school they know what they're looking for for admissions but they don't know the school which when you're looking to apply for law school you have to find somewhere that's a good fit so talking to an actual current student is so helpful because not only do you get to see a feel of how the students are but they're going to be able to answer your questions very well because some of the questions I would get were what's the atmosphere of campus is it fun is it competitive do you do things aside from law school with people from law school like students are going to be able to answer that way better than the admissions counselors because they actually have experience with it because law schools change over time a law school that may have been competitive in the 60s may not be as competitive now for example, the school I went to, it was competitive in the 60s. Now, I could ask anybody for notes and they would not tell me no. I always got notes when I asked for it when I needed them or when I needed to supplement my own notes. I always got help when I asked for it. So, but you wouldn't be able to get that really from an admissions officer because let me tell you something. If you're talking to an admissions officer they're, and they get asked that question, they're probably going to ask a student in the office the answer and then answer for you. So just listen to the student worker, ask the student worker questions because they're gonna be able to answer them um, because they're likely involved in the school. They're likely involved in BOA or SBA or both. Um, so they can answer those kinds of questions. They've likely had experience. Like I was able to talk a lot about the exchange program because I'd been to Oxford and was able to talk about how my school allows us to go to Oxford University and study for a semester, a summer semester, but a semester. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. Do not discredit the student just because they're a student. They know stuff. Um, and truth be told, once you get done talking to the student, asking all your questions, you're likely not going to need to talk to the admissions counselor because let me tell you, the student answered all the questions. So like, ask the questions don't be like oh i probably should just ask this no just go ahead and ask the student even if it's with like financial aid let me tell you something most of the people who go to law school they had to get financial aid so even if it's that don't be afraid to ask that kind of question to the student they, they're going to keep it confidential they're going to try to be honest i was always honest whenever i was asked about financial aid i'd be like yeah i was on financial aid here's what i had to do here's who i had to contact 
Um, so, yeah. If you're going to ask for a meeting or a specific phone call with an admissions counselor or the dean of admissions or whoever that's like in the higher up in the admissions office, ask pointed and specific questions. Do not ask general questions like, where do I live? Don't do that because they're literally probably going to hand you a packet or let's be real. I could answer that as a student worker. I could tell you places to live. So ask specific and pointed questions that pertain specifically to you in your situation that may not be something a student worker could answer. So let's say you're coming in from out of state and you're trying to figure out um, a financial aid and where to live and how to handle the out-of-state portion. The out-of-state portion is something that most student workers won't be able to do because they're not coming from out-of-state. So that is something that would be good to ask an admissions counselor about. But just general questions, don't worry about it. One thing that is a pet peeve, at least it was in my admissions office, it probably is elsewhere that was a pet peeve in one place, um, is if you're on a waiting list or even if you're like accepted um, or you're not accepted but like they haven't started acceptances yet do not try to put a voice with a name or a name with a face um and i say that because of video calls and phone calls there's likely not going to be actual in-person visits for the time being but like don't do that that is it will hold like it does not do anything to help you get admitted um to put a name with a face you know that don't do that that is not a reason to book an appointment with an admissions counselor it wastes their time and it's just completely unnecessary and like they'll likely remember you but not for the most positive thing and that is oh they just wanted to meet with me so i could see who they were like just don't do that um yeah if you're gonna talk to them like have an actual problem. Like, don't be the person that always just talks to them, you know? Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, so let's keep on going with stuff that you're probably not going to hear about. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that I was told. Because, like, the thing is, I don't want to give just generic, bland advice. Because you can get that from anywhere. You can get that from the book called Law School Confidential. Um, you can probably get it from Link What You Call's video. Um, not saying that it's, like, bland. But it's just very generic advice for law school. Which is really good. But also, at the same time, because it's generic and it applies to everyone, you get a false sense of... This is what it's going to be like because chances are it's not going to be like that for you. Not every single law student is going to be top of the class, go to the best law school in the country, um, and get a job right out of law school. That doesn't happen for everybody. Statistically, that cannot happen for everybody because the top of the class is only the top 10% of, like, Order of the Coif is only the top 10% of students. So, like, it just, it's not possible. Um, which is why I want to do more real, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but more like realistic advice, um, and more just like advice to help you out that isn't just like study a lot, treat it like a job, have a schedule, look at the town before you, like before you move in, move in or before orientation move in about a week before so you can get comfortable in your I don't want to get that kind of stuff because that stuff is known um I did mention at the beginning of this video that the uh, top advice I got was to not go to law school and let me explain this advice because you're like excuse me what law school shouldn't be um an off-the-cuff decision you should make this decision with lots of thought behind it you when asked why you chose to go to law school do not say because my parents wanted me to because blah 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 blah. you need to have your own reason that isn't attached to any person in your life and so when i say don't go to law school first of all it's expensive um second of all it's something you really really should think about honestly advice that you will hear is 
take time off from school. Do not just go from regular undergrad work to law school. Take a year off. Take a few years off. Get an actual job. Um, I took a semester off and got a job in something that was kind of adjacent to what I wanted to do. Um, and I felt like that really helped me because I got a little bit of real world experience. I got a little bit of extra money to kind of cushion my financial aid, which was very nice. Um, so yeah, take time off. Do not go straight from undergrad to law school because here's the thing. If you get in a job, you might change your mind because um, it's a lot harder to change your mind about law school when you're in law school than when you're not in law school and you don't have all this commitment to it. Um, but let's say you are in law school. Let's say you're in your first semester. If you don't like law school, do not feel obligated to complete it. Drop out with the most, the minimal, <laughs> what are words? Drop out with the least amount of debt that you can if you're not enjoying it. Because let me tell you, if you don't like it, you are going to be miserable. And honestly, you might not do well and you don't want to be kicked out. So leave on your own terms. And I know that sounds so harsh that you might be kicked out, but if your grades, like, you got to keep up your grades. Um, and if you're not enjoying it, you have no reason to keep up your grades. So like, leave when you can with the least amount of debt if you're not enjoying it. So like law school is not something that you can just take lightly and be like, oh, I'm smart. I can go to law school because guess what? I was smart. I went to law school. I struggled. I liked it, but I struggled and I got to law school and I realized I was not the only smart person there. In fact, there were plenty of people who were smarter than me. One of my friends, she is absolutely amazing during this horrible, horrible, horrible time in the world. She actually was accepting donations for meals to give to a women's shelter. Like, come on. She is absolutely amazing. But it was one of our first, like, things that the law school organized that was, like, outside of the campus. And she was drunk. We were at, like, a bar. We were having some fun. And she was able to talk about Kant and be on point about Kant, like, flawlessly drunk. And I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember the name of the sociology dudes who created the theories of sociology. You created like the four main theories of sociology sober. I could barely remember them for the tests I took in college because yes, I majored in sociology. So I learned these guys' names like six different times. Um, <laughs> and she could do this drunk. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm the stupidest person here. Um, so yeah, you might think you're super smart, but like when it comes to actually being thrown into law school and like actually seeing the people around you, it can be really intimidating and it can change how you feel about law school because that night I went home and I was like, I'm so stupid. Why did I choose to go to law school? I, I'm, I'm not near as smart as any of my classmates, um, but I held out and I graduated. So look at me now. I had to take the four exam twice. Now that has nothing to do with law school, uh, with law school or anything. That's just me not being able to do standardized tests really well. Um, but yeah, so just think about stuff like that because your mind can change while you're in law school. So like if it does, it's not the end of the world, but just be active and take initiative if your mind does change and you realize law school isn't for you don't be afraid to drop to like not drop out but don't be afraid to pull out because it's not the end of the world um so yeah um other advice when you're talking to the admissions people so let's go back to the admissions thing a question a really important question to ask to get a feel of the campus and stuff because you can't actually go to the campus and see people interacting yourself is when you're talking to the person be sure to like listen to them because you're likely not going to see them face to face but be sure to listen to them and see when they're pausing and hesitating and like just listen to the inclinations of their voice because that'll tell you if they're bsing their way through what their answer or if they're being honest so Let's say you ask them about the atmosphere of the campus and like, oh yeah, everything's great. It, and they're like struggling to come up with words. Ask them specifically being like, okay, so if you, so like, how hard is it to get notes if you missed class? And if they still struggle with an answer, they're probably in a competitive environment. Um, 
or ask ask them about how professors are. Um, one thing that's real that I find that I found really important to ask, and I started just including it in my tours more and more, is that career services um, at my school at least helps you post graduation. I don't know how many career service offices do that, um, so that's something to consider. Um, asking is all about the career services office. Do they just help you with with jobs in law school or OCIs? Like how how does that all work? Um, Typically, if you're really interested in law school, you're going to know all the terms. You're going to know OCIs and stuff. Um, if they, if your student says something like, what's an OCI, like, say, OCIs happen in the fall, and you're like, what's an OCI? Don't be afraid to ask. Um, don't just nod a lot. Don't just be like, uh-huh, yeah. Because if they're good at what they're doing, they're, they'll go back and be like, okay, so did you understand that? Don't be like, yeah, I understood that totally. And you have no idea. And you're like, what's an OCI? don't be afraid to ask what an OCI is. It's an on-campus interview. It's where all the big firms typically get all their <laughs> hires for the first year after law school. Um, so, or you're for, for the second semester, second year, like internship. Um, so like, don't be afraid to ask questions like that. Don't be afraid to ask them to clarify. Um, ask about career services, ask about professors, ask about campus life. Um, and just like make sure you're listening, you're actively listening to them because if you don't, you might miss cues because like I said, you right now you can't go to campuses to actually see the atmosphere for yourself. So you have to rely on the people you're talking to over the phone. So you got to dig into it because one of the most important things about law school is the atmosphere. You're going to be with these people for three years and let me tell you, it's like high school you go back to high school. There is cattiness like high school, um, there's cliques like high school. And while I had a really great experience and I loved um, the friends that I had at the end, um, I went through a really hard time finding those friends because there were cliques. Um, but like I said, even people I wasn't in a clique with, I could ask for them for notes and they would help me out. One of my friends, my last year of law school, my first semester, I was cold called on the first day. That had never happened to me. I'd never been called on the first day before. But I was called on the first day. And luckily, it w I read the case. But my professor asked for like a specific, asked me about a specific quote. And I was trying to find the quote in the text. I was like, I don't know where this is. And so one of my friends was texting me because yes, I used my computer. And yes, I had my texting it. One of my friends who was in one of these clicks. She was very smart. She was like texting me the answer. And finally, like I got, I talked myself into the answer luckily, but she had texted me and after class, she was like, oh my gosh, girl, I'm so glad. Like, but you had already answered it by the time I sent you the text, but I'm here for you. So even though the clicks happened and I wasn't in the click, I was still helped. So like, that's the kind of atmosphere that you got to be aware of. Like, Sometimes that's not going to happen. Depending on the law school, that might not happen. And I'm not saying everybody's going to have an experience like Elle Woods, but I've never been to Harvard, so I wouldn't know. Um, but that kind of stuff can happen um, where there is cattiness. But I was lucky that my school, I never really saw that. So, yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to really dig into these questions, especially since you can't see it yourself. You can't go in and see a class. Like most of the times on a tour, if, you're law, if the law school you're looking at is good, they're gonna have a class that you can sit in on. Um, so you don't get to see that. So ask them about that because that's the kind of stuff that can help you realize, oh, this is where I wanna be. This is a cool place. This is a place where I can see myself thriving. This is a place where I can see myself succeeding one day rather than just being like, getting like these cold answers that are just run of the mill. Yeah, our law school's great, blah, 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 right? So don't be afraid to, de to dig into the answers you're being given because you need the truth, especially right now when you can't go see, you can't go visit the school. <laughs> and there, and I want to like, this isn't a preface, but I want to end all this saying the only reason why I can answer these kind of questions is because I did work in the admissions office at my school since my 1L year. I worked at it summer of 1L all the way through 3L. Um, 
So I do have quite a bit of experience with admissions. I was very honest on my tours. I, and I, I will say this, like, I'm not gonna talk down about my school. I didn't on my tours, but I was honest, um, especially with my own experience and saying that it was hard, but I had a good time anyways, um, because law school isn't easy. It's not a walk in the park. Um, so yeah, hopefully you get someone who's honest on the phone because it's not fun to just listen to someone read off the numbers and tell you how great their school is. You want to know what it's really like because you're about to spend three years there. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I'm kind of upset that I had to refilm this video, but you know, it is what it is. Um, at least this one doesn't have my dog barking in it. The first one, my dog was barking for like the first 10 minutes. It was great because y'all know I don't edit things. We're still not doing that. We're still filming on the phone. Um, so that's all I got for you. I hope you all have a great day, great night, great evening whenever you're watching this. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up because that helps this video reach more potential law students. Um, and if you like what you saw, you can subscribe. I will do more law school related content. Um, now that I am out of law school, I will do more content as my life goes on. I will also do non-law school related content. So if you don't like this, but you want to see me talk about Breath of the Wild for however long I talk about Breath of the Wild, go for it. If you want to see me talk about cats, oh, subscribe because I will. Um, so that's all I got for you. Hope you have a lovely, lovely day. I've already said that. As you can see, I'm so good at this YouTube thing. Um, anyways, bye.